should. Good morning, everyone. Waiting for a couple more people, and we'll get started. We're a little early, so. Hey, Sonia. How are you doing? Hello, Benjamin. Hi. How are you doing, sir? Turn off my fan so it doesn't distract everyone. But you guys might hear a little puppy in the background. I have a puppy that is COVID dependent. He's always following me around. So he's, he's he might be whining or barking. So, but he won't leave my side when I'm at home. Can we see him? Let's see him. <laughs> There he is. He's Curtis. Oh, he's adorable. Hi, Curtis. <laughs> Hi, Curtis. Oh, adorable. Thank you. Yeah, he's pretty cute. He's a good guy. But it's funny, all these poor dogs are going to have a culture shock when we all get back to like going out to the offices and doing our thing <laughs> more and more. So, yeah, I'm going to record this meeting as well. So it's only 11 o'clock. We'll wait a second because I don't want to start the video because people are need to be admitted in. So I'm afraid I'm going to miss people. So we'll give it a couple minutes. Um, and I'm using a free account. So I only have 45 minutes for this class anyways. It probably won't go that long. It's relatively simple stuff. So hopefully, um, you know, we can get it all in if uh, in that time frame. But I think we will. I think we will. And thanks for coming on to the Zoom meeting. I know we're all sort of Zoomed out, but I still think there's some stuff we should we could learn uh, within this period, and I know there's some new people on here as well. So uh, the new people, like Benjamin, new to the company, and probably hasn't seen this before. So I think you'll get some stuff out of it. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, yeah, I'm getting a lot out of the Zoom meetings. It's starting to become my life. <laughs> I know, right, Gina? It's yeah, it's, sort of, yeah. it's just nonstop. Uh, you know, I was doing some all day long on Wednesdays for about three months. For, for Berkshire Hathaway Corporate, and uh, it became a lot. I was sick of hearing myself talk, to be frank. So uh, we put a break on some of them, and and then Sam Gillian fills in. So I do some of those still for for the corporate office. But yeah, a couple more people here. Okay, there's Kim. Alrighty. Good morning, Kim. How you doing? Hi, Brett. And then oh, we got a couple more coming in. There's Sherry. Okay. Uh, see waiting room. Admit. 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 Okay, we're adding people. All righty, here we go. All right, so we're getting more people in now. So hopefully. We got another one in, another one in. Sorry, I just had to add people to this meeting. Okay. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Brett Borkin. I'm with California Title Company, as you guys are aware. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about the Berkshire Hathaway market reports. And uh, so the, let me just record this actually really quick. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about the Berkshire Hathaway market reports. Uh, and this is a great tool that's on MyConnect. Uh, if you, those of you guys who aren't familiar with what MyConnect is, is MyConnect is the company intranet site. And the difference between an intranet site and an internet site is intranet has to be username and password protected. So it's within the company um, you know, uh, uh, systems. So you guys all have probably been there before. If you don't know your 
uh, might connect to username and password. You can reach out to your office administrator, they'll get it to you. But most people, it's the first initial of your first name, and then your full last name, and then the last four digits of your social security number. So my wife happens to be an agent in the uh, Calabasas Berkshire Hathaway office. So I'm gonna go in today as her account. And I'm just gonna share the screen. Um, and if you guys have questions, feel free to sort of blurt them out if you want, and we'll just try and go from there. I see some of you are mute, some of you are not. But if you have, if you have questions, feel free to, you know, just to interrupt me, that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. Here we go, share. Now, we're gonna go into MyConnect. So what MyConnect is basically, once again, it's an, it's an internet site and you're gonna find a lot of your guys' tools here on MyConnect. So my wife is Nicole Borkren, so I'm gonna go N Borkren, and then her last four of her social security number. And we're gonna be able to get into this system. So I'm gonna log in and let me move this over here. So basically you have this toolbar across the top here. Uh, all these things are here. You can sort of play around with them if you haven't already done so. You also wanna go in if you're brand new, click on your photo over here or if there's not a photo and you add it. So this is where you would do your whole profile section here. You can hit profile, you could add everything in here for yourself uh, and you know just fill these, fill these things out and uh, that will get your profile up and going. Remember now that anything you have on your profile, this system sends to all the other Berkshire Hathaway stuff, like property websites and those type of things, uh, any of your marketing pieces, it will auto-populate with what you put there. But today we're gonna go over the section called reports right here. So we're gonna go across the toolbar, I'm gonna hit reports, and I'm gonna hit reports again, okay? Now, this top toolbar here is the different types of reports that we could uh, look at. So. I'm going to click on today, right now, we're gonna click on Property Watch. Property Watch is the one that I personally like well. Uh, and what it's gonna do is this is a system that actually goes in and pulls MLS data. Uh, it's like Internet Data Exchange, which is IDX. Uh, let me go here, I'm gonna add a couple of people here. Internet Data Exchange. So Internet Data Exchange means it's a reciprocal, reciprocal uh, program that if someone else has a listing at you know, XYZ Real Estate, you could actually use their listings on your websites uh, as well as onto uh, you know, systems like this. So I'm going to show you guys an example of one of these here. So I'm going to just click on this. And this is sort of what we're gonna teach you guys how to build today. So I made this one actually about a year ago is when I first made this template. Uh, I made it for the Pasadena area. But if you see right here, it defaults to today's date, 924. So it was updated just as I did this class. Now you also have this photo right here. There are some stock photos, but I just picked this photo since I'm talking about Pasadena. I picked a Rose Bowl photo and put it there. I think a great idea I met with a, a team last week is if you guys have a team picture um, or maybe your own marketing picture, put your picture here on all your reports, that way, uh, you can just, uh, you know, market yourself as well. So it's a little better. So all your pictures will go on there. Now you have this section right here. This is sold Southwest Pasadena. It says, dear Brett, here's the latest list and activity that matches your search criteria. If you would like to tour any of these properties, please call or email me. Remember the listing agent is going to represent the seller's interests. So you want to make sure, you know, I'm representing you. You could put whatever you want there. This is customizable. Uh, okay. Casper Scorpion. I find them Casper Scorpion. Yeah, different costs for a house. Yeah. No. Maybe they can mute themselves. Uh, that's okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, now, what else we have here? That's my lovely wife right there. All her stuff is is uh, is is there. So she's able to auto populate all that stuff that I showed you on the first section that goes, you know, on the the profile section. It automatically populates here. So she can convert this property, this report, or her clients can revert it to a convert to a PDF, share social media wise, all these things. And what it did is it pulled MLS data. So this property right here has been on the market for two days. It's listed at one million one ninety nine. All these things are live links. So I could, you know, if I'm a the actual uh, client receiving this, I can click on these and it will actually go live. I'm not gonna do it right now because I'm afraid it might go somewhere else, but schedule tour. I'm just gonna click schedule tour and I can type in any information here. So it's my name automatically as the consumer pops in there. And 
I could go in here, hey, I love this property, I'd love to see it, you know, uh, please send me some more information. Now, it's not my wife Nicole's listing, but she will get the actual uh, email, of course, because she's the one that sent it to me. So it's a great, great tool there. Uh, so it goes all the way down here and it gives you all these different properties. For example, this one has, you know, a lot of properties here for this criteria. So pretty cool tool, it's updated, you know, right when I send it, uh, there's a couple different ways you can actually customize it too. So I'm gonna go in there and sh I showed you what the example of this is. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to build it. So I wanna go in here and I wanna click new. I'm gonna type in report name. So report name could be anything. It could be, you know, when we were back at open houses again uh, and you guys could meet someone that comes in and you know, it could be like, you know, crazy cat lady. <laughs> you can name it whatever you want because no one's gonna see this section right here where it says, uh, you know, whatever you want, report there. Uh, report title down here is actually gonna be on the top of the report. So you wanna, you wanna be careful what you write here, but this section right here could be whatever you want to jog your memory on who you're actually creating this report for. So created for a client, uh, that's the only option right now. Email type, property watch. So it's, that's the actual property. Now I could type in some criteria here, but the best way to do is I want to go and hit edit. I'm going to click edit and I could go and pick these fields right here. So I could, you know, obviously open houses aren't going on here, but I could sort of narrow down criteria. I like personally to keep it all open because how many of you guys have had buyers before that say they're only going to buy $800,000, but um, I've ended up buying an $895,000 property. So it does happen. So I keep, like to keep these up. Um, so if this is for a buyer, you can maybe break down some of the bed and bath breakdowns because they don't want to see everything. However, you know, maybe the more the merrier. So I would keep stuff there so they could see what's going on. Now, uh, what I like the best way to do it, instead of searching it by, sorry, I've got to add some people. Instead of searching it by city, I like to go in and hit map. So I'm going to click map. And you guys are all aware how the mapping systems work like in your MLS, right? So I could go in and I could draw a specific map. So it sort of took me where I am, where my wife's office is, is in Calabasas. And it knew where her office is, so she, they figure she's working that area. So if you're in Pasadena, it will take it to the Pasadena area. So I want to go in and I want to you know, go after a specific area. So I could drill in here a little bit more. And let's say I want to go in, we'll just click this area right here. I want to go in and I want to click over here on the left hand side. I could draw a polygon area. So I'm going to click on this. I could click a circle if I want to just draw a circle, square, uh, but I want to draw a polygon. So I could go here. Now you see I have a, a star there. I could draw my area. So I could click one point, click another point, click another point, click another point, click another point. And as you want to do circles, like see if I just did a straight line, I'm going to miss out some of it. So the more circular area, you just do multiple points. You just keep clicking it, smaller, smaller segments. So then you could actually pick the actual, the exact area. Uh, when I hit cancel that, oops, it did, sorry about that. So I can go here, then I can pick on this and I can close it out. So once I close it out, I want to name this. So I'm just going to put Calabasas. Calabasas, test, okay. Now I'm just gonna hit okay. Now it pulled that area. So it's pulling data for me. So it's pulling anything that's actually active in this property in this area right now, okay. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to just close this out. Did I not save it? Sorry, you know, on the Zoom meetings, it's a little more difficult because my, I, I've only seen part of my screen. So bear with me one second here. So let's go here. I'm just gonna pick a quick area. Okay. Minimize that down. So I'm gonna hit uh, test and then okay. This okay button was blocked because I had you guys' faces on it. So I didn't see that, sorry. So I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, so now all this latitude and longitude popped in here. So it's all there. Now contacts. I could go in here and I could either find my contacts that I have in here that my wife's already put in there, or I could actually do 
a specific brand new contact. I can go with new. And you can start filling out information here, okay? So I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna pick a current contact. And I'll just pick me again. Hit okay. Now, Brett Borkman is going to be receiving this report either on a daily basis, once a day, every three days, five days, seven days, 14 days, or 20 days, or you could go real time. So what real time is basically if Sherry DeAndre entered a brand new listing in the Oaks right now, and Sherry's on this call, uh, the buyer or the consumer that's receiving this report would get another email. So they might get five emails a day from you because uh, it's real time. So as people enter into that little map area we chose, they'll get an update. I like this report for two different ways. I like this report for buyers you're showing properties to or are interested in certain areas to save it that way. But I also personally like it the best is for your clients who might be interested in selling. Uh, listings are king right now, as we all know. We wanna leverage as much as possible to get more listings. So I think maybe a good idea is to create a, a report for each member of your sphere of influence or everyone you know in Calabasas, make a report for a certain section of Calabasas. And then you put them from your sphere of influence to receive these because I might not be interested in selling right at the moment, but if I see that the prices are going crazy and one down the street just sold for $300,000 more than I thought it would, I might start thinking about it again. So people want to know what's going on in their market. And this is a nice subtle way to be able to send them updates and you could sort of write in the little email, hey, just sending you a little update. I'm not sure if you're interested in selling right now, but everyone's interested in what's going on in the community. So this will uh, give you that opportunity to do stuff like that. So I'm gonna pick uh, right here, I'm just gonna pick 28 days. So those are people that may be interested in selling at some point, you send them a 28 day report, I think it's great. Uh, if it's someone that's a hot buyer, you would put them on real time. Now it says email frequency, we already did that. Now copy agent on reports. I always would say click yes, because there's nothing more embarrassing than getting a call from your client and say, oh my God, thank you for that email. I love property number one. And you're going, well, what was property number one? So this way you could actually go to your emails because you've got it as well. And you could uh, see what property one was. So I would do that. Now you could do with this section right here, report title, uh, test or Zoom, okay? But you can make it anything. You know, uh, the Oaks in Calabasas are uh, Ladera Heights or whatever it might be, you could make your own section there. So I'm just putting test for Zoom. I could do maximum listings, 25, 50, 100. You know, I, there's no right or wrong answer to this because, uh, you know, if you have a smaller, more micro area, you're not gonna get 100 listings anyways. So, you know, just put it 50. If there's not 50, they're not gonna receive them anyways. Now, expiration date. Expiration date's good to do because I would maybe set my clients up on this, put an expiration date out for maybe three months out or six months out. And then you wanna call them as soon as the expiration date comes and just says, hey, look, at, I've been sending you these reports for the last you know, six months. Are you enjoying them? Uh, do you know anyone else that might be of interest of get, receiving these reports? If not, I could turn you off from receiving these reports, but it gives you an opportunity to give someone a call to discuss real estate. So you could put a section on there. Okay, now cover page. You could do new cover page or we can browse ones already. So remember when I showed you that one of the Rose Bowl picture, I can just click browse and they have all these different cover pages here. So I can either upload my own or I can pick one, okay? I get a new image, if I hit new image, it's gonna give me a path to find out where I wanna pull it from. I could, you know, uh, just pull an image myself uh, and put it in here, okay? Just like you would uh, in any other system. So I'm gonna cancel that out. Yes. Browse again. And I'm just gonna pick this one right here just so you can see that it actually pops in. All right, so I can hit okay. Now for all intents and purposes, I made my report. So I could hit save and send, or I can just hit save right now. So I'll just hit save, uh, report, report name. Oh, I, I did do the one, that this one, <laughs> sorry. The crazy cat lady one. So let me go ahead here and so save. 
Now it's pulling my data literally right now. So you see another date, 924. That's the photo I posted up in there. As my wife's information all in here. And it has a new description. So the first time you set up a, set up a report like this, it will have an introductory of what this report is. Thank you for subscribing to our Property Watch. Uh, Property Watch scans MLS data frequently on your behalf, making this report your most up-to-date source for new home listings. Here are some of the most recent properties that have come on the market and the master criteria you identified. I can change this thing and I can customize this. This doesn't have to be it, but this is the default one that the company puts in. I'll show you guys how to change it. So the first email in is going to be something like this. The, the following emails will be, hey, you know, here's another, uh, you know, update for you on what's going on in the your selected area. Mm -hmm. So you can you can change it. So there's two different options. Okay. Now again, my wife actually is at a walkthrough right now. So she didn't create this. It just automatically pulled everything all together for her. Pretty simple stuff. Now we have more properties here. If you saw the first one I gave you, it was a smaller map. So the photos were a little bigger. This one was a little bit of a bigger of a map I did. And so it gave more options. So the photos may got a little smaller. So think of that, the more properties, the smaller the photos, because they don't want to make it a, you know, a 30 page report. Uh, and the less properties, the bigger photos on it. Uh, it's cool. Any have any questions on this so far? All right, cool. Now, that is how a report looks. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy. You guys like it so far? Yes. Okay, well, I'll take your, I'll, I'll take your silence as a uh, vote of confidence. So that's how that report looks. Now, there's a couple other reports here, and it's all based on sort of the same platform. So I'm going to go back to reports. I'm going to go reports again, and I can do market uh, property value estimator. So this is an automated CMA provides you clients with active pending solds and off market. Similar, similar product, just a little bit of a difference in look. So let me click on that one. It's going to update this one as we go. Stay with me. It'll take a little longer to pull. Maybe my map is pretty big, but. Hey, Brett. Yes. Uh, question. Uh, mm -hmm. Back on uh, the property watch report. Yeah. Let's say, for example, you want to send your clients a, a property watch every two to two weeks, say, um, uh -huh. but you don't want to keep sending them the same properties that were on the previous report. It, it, it won't. You... It, it only will pull the new stuff. It will. Okay. Yeah. So ju it'll just keep adding on. So it's like cumulative over a certain, right? It just, right. It just keeps adding on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks for clarifying. Sure, sure. Now, uh, so once again, we made this report right now. So property value estimate, we get to, to customize that photo. Here's an introductory again, so we can change that uh, as we see fit. Now, it will give a little more information here. So this report, some people like this better, property value estimate. It's going to take and it's going to put pending solds active. So sales data, 24 days, listings current for sale in the map I drew is 19, uh, longest to shortest. Pending data, 62 days. So it gives you basically comps and mark, you know, and, and a map of where these things are. Uh, average prices, pending data, uh, gives you some graphs here as well. Uh, this one might be a great one for your sellers, uh, our prospective sellers. Days on market, uh, gives you a list of all the different properties. And as you see, as I scroll over here, these are all hyperlinks. So I can actually, if I'm the consumer that got this email, I can click on this. And it will show me the actual more information on that property. Okay. Now let me go back in here. Uh, gives you a sample of local inventory, gives you some photos. I can map it out, click more photos, details, PDF, all these things. So it's given us a lot of information here. So this is not a bad one as well for your sellers. Um, some of my clients are doing, or at least I'm trying to suggest them to do is People are always looking for things to do and how to market on a ma monthly mailing. It's hard, I know it's hard to come up with stuff, you know, geez, I got, I got a mailing next week, what am I gonna do? You know what, maybe once a month, you print reports out like this for your given farm, and you actually may put, you know, staple these all together and send a letter to your farm saying, hey, here's, my month, here's our monthly update on what's going on in your community, and actually do a hard mail. 
<laughs> excuse me. Then what I would do is maybe in that letter I send to everyone, say, uh, you know, here's a you know hard copy. Uh, if you would like to receive these via email, please shoot me a text and put your phone number in there. Now, why do I say send me a text? The reason why I said send me a text is because what happens? They send you a text, you're getting their phone number. If you say shoot me an email, all you're getting is their email. But if you say in there, if you'd like to receive these on a monthly basis via email, please shoot me a text with your email address, you're getting both. So I think what we wanna do is grab as many phone numbers as we can, and as many email addresses as we can, because what's uh -oh. great about email is it's free. If you mail a postcard out like this, if I printed this at the office, put it together in an envelope, it cost me a minimum of 50 cents just for the stamp, right? So if I could email these out to as many people as possible, it's gonna be free. And there's an old saying in real estate, if it's free, it's for me. So, uh, so anything you could market yourself uh, free is a, is a great thing to do. So, anybody have any questions on this thing? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Louisa, uh, Louisa maybe has a question, it sounds like. Uh, okay, so and we got another one here, let me go back to reports. So this one, market tracker and quarterly reports. So this is obviously done as a quarterly, but I could go and market tracker. Let me click on this one and I'm gonna show you what market tracker looks like. So I did this one for Hidden Hills, I believe. Hidden Hills, those of you who don't know, it's a, it's a very affluent neighborhood just outside, of, just right outside of Calabasas. Uh, you know, anywhere from $25 million homes to $2 million homes. Kardashians, people like that live in there. So what this does is it will take this given area of Hidden Hills and give a breakdown. So this is a year over year. In August of 19, there was number of sales of three. August of 20, uh, there was five. We, so it's an increase. Uh, new listings, uh, more you know, then, so it's down uh, in listings. Uh, also, we have average uh, days on market. Average days on markets have gone up, which is ironic uh, in, in this time. We've seen days on markets going down, but this is a very high end area. So you're talking, I think probably the average sales price there is going to be, I don't know, Sherry, what do you think? Six, seven million dollars right now, probably on an average. So those things don't move as long, and that price point's gone up probably 15, 20% from last year of August. So maybe that's why we're seeing these things on the market a little longer. But it just pulls this data instantaneously for me. It's really easy, really simple. So if you are working Hidden Hills area, this is another great piece to send out uh, on a regular basis. So it gives you a lot of good graphs. You know, some people are, are different mindsets. People think graphs are great, it's visual, people like those things. You know, some others think too many graphs are too confusing, people don't always wanna see that. So it's gonna be up to you and how you guys wanna, uh, what your vision is on how you guys wanna market. It, but it gives you all these great graphs. And, and I think people in general do like visuals and this helps you to uh, show what's going on in the, uh, in the given area. So, uh, anyone have a question so far? All righty. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna show you one more time how to build this. And uh, because I might've gone a little too fast. So I'll pick on property watch one more time. And I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna make a brand new one. I'm gonna hit new. I'm gonna make a report name, uh, test one, okay. client property watch. I'm gonna hit edit. And I'm gonna hit map search. I'm gonna close that down. And this way I can go map search and I can go in and pick a given area. Let's go, so here's Hidden Hills for an example. I could go in and pick around this area. So I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna pick my rec, my uh, polygon thing here, I'm gonna draw it. I'm gonna pick certain areas. So I can sort of customize it. And go across over there. I'm going to put, uh, this is not Hidden Hills, but let's go West Hills. I'm gonna hit okay. Now I can go in and I can hit this drop down here and I can sort of start narrowing things down if I want to. Okay, bed and bath breakdown. I can go three to four or three to five. Okay, I could go bed and bath, bath uh, three to uh, one to three. So you can start narrowing these things down if you wanted to. I'm gonna hit okay. Now I once again, what do I have to do? I have to pick either a new contact that I might've just met at a function 
or I want to, if I've already inputted them in, I can hit browse and I can find them. So I'll pick me again. And I can hit okay. So it picked me as a contact. Email frequency, you want to go in and you could go email frequency and just pick the uh, amount of times you want to do it. Then I can go copy agent, you want to go yes. And report name, uh, West Hills. Checking my time's going out, West Hills. And then the amount of times, expiration date, I'm not gonna put one on here. Cover image, once again, I can change, I can put a new image or I can hit browse and pick what I want. So I'll just pick on that one. I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm going to, if I hit save and send, Brett Borkman will get one right now. So I'm just gonna hit save because I don't wanna get a whole bunch of emails right now. So once again, it pulls this data right away. And that's the photo I picked. Pulls all the stuff, the information there, yeah. and all my wife's information and these properties. So pretty simple. I mean, you guys know how to do maps from the MLS as it is. Uh, I have a client that doesn't actually put any of her contacts in. What she does is she puts herself as the contact. She has the reports emailed to her. She prints them as a PDF, then or she saves them as a PDF, and she puts it to Google Docs, and then she'll send a link to her clients via Google Docs. So, you know, uh, that's one way to do it. And that's what we like the way she likes to control it. Uh, but if not, you could actually just send it directly through this way. So different ways to do it. I, I think a great way to do it is uh, maybe do a mailing. Also, hopefully sooner than later, we're able to go back and do open houses. If I'm sitting in an open house, even if I don't have, it's not my list, it's someone else's open house, I would do an area around the property I'm sitting print out maybe 15 or 20 of these and as everyone walks in you know i might not like the house that i'm actually visiting at the open house but i love the neighborhood because i'm obviously looking there hand them out to people and say hey look here's a great report i put together for my clients if you guys are interested in getting one like this you know instantaneously or once a month give me your email address and i'll set you up to get to receive these so this is a great way to start building your database and we want to build our databases as much as we can hey, Brett, uh, I have a question yeah Okay, so back to the property value estimate. Uh -huh. I, I don't know how many pages that would be, but can that be printed or part of it be printed? It, it sure can, yes. All, all, these, all these items you can print for sure. Uh, it, it, it says, uh, if I estimate, I can click on this one. This one took me a little bit to, to load up. But uh, yeah, it, it says convert to PDF. So if you send it to yourself, you obviously can get it and then you could, convert to PDF and then you can print it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Brett, I have a question too. Yes. Uh -huh, Paul. Uh, on, on that note, uh, so you can go over the part where you can save it to your uh, to your drive? Well, you I, 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 unfortunately, I don't have enough time to do that right now, but basically what you could do, I mean, I can show you, I can show you what you're gonna do, uh, but I'm not gonna open up my Google and do a whole Google Docs. But basically, as soon as this loads up, I could save it as a PDF, or I could open it as a PDF, and I save it to my computer, then I go to my Google account, open up Google Docs, okay. load it up into Google Docs. Got it. So, so then, uh, then it's no longer interactive, correct? It's, yeah, because it's gonna be a locked PDF, right. So if you email it from here, this system, all these buttons are live. So you can start seeing, you see my fingers there now, so that means I can click on something. If I convert it to a PDF, Obviously, it locks it, and those aren't, you know, uh, live buttons. Right. So, like I said, it's, that was a question. Yeah, it's it's here or there. I mean, it's it depends on really how you want to do it. So, once again, here's the report, and it's a, it just as a PDF. So I could I could save this, put it in my Google Docs. Uh, I mean, we could do a different class on that. Uh, in the future of how to work with Google Docs, which I think maybe might be a good one. No, that was it, just the simple workflow, you know. Yeah. You said yeah. your wife does that, I just wanted to be clear. Yeah, yeah, we can show you guys how to do that. So I think this is, you know, it's a, it's a really neat user-friendly tool. Uh, let me show you one thing really quick though. So we talked about uh, how to change the content of the actual uh, verbiage on the email. So I'm gonna click on my wife's link, I'm gonna hit profile. profile. 
Now, if you scroll down towards the bottom, you're going to see this section right here. So reports. So you could go property watch and you could go one page, two page. You could also type in property watch initial intro. So whatever I type in here, this will go on the first email your client receives that you've signed up for the system. So it could be whatever message you want. Hey, thank you for signing up for my property watches. I uh, we will send you up to date information on uh, the local area you're interested in. If you have any of these interest in these properties, please let me know. Even in the time of COVID, I can make appointments to show you these properties. Whatever you want your message to be, right? So then the next one, the follow up email. So this is after I already was sent. Benjamin, I don't. So as soon as I send out the first one. Now, if there's another email that's going to go to my client because I put them on real time and they get one maybe an hour later, you don't want the exact same message. You want to put here, hey, we found one more property that matches your criteria. It's just hit the MLS now. Whatever you want. If they're on real time, you would change it. Okay. So this is where you would do those. So this is where the customization is for those reports and what the email uh, is going to be, uh, the verbiage on the first uh, cover sheet of the, prop of the reports. All right. Any questions on that, so Brett, I have a question. Yeah. Did you say that the photos are custom at the top of the uh, reports? Are you, those you can photos? Yeah. So, so the company has photos uh, that are already in there, but you could also upload your own. So, mm -hmm. let's see here. I'm not gonna be so I could go in. I could upload my own. So I can hit edit. See where it, so now let's start making a new one. I can either hit browse and find out all the company photos okay. Okay. that are loaded in there that the company actually did, or you could go hit new image and you can actually find images from your computer. So I hit attach and it will go. I can go my pictures and I could go. Let me see here if I have that. So I can put my logo on there. I can save. Uh, please don't require. Uh, okay, so you so basically you can save your save your photos in there. So I, my logo can go can bounce right in there. What do I say? Record saved. Cool. And I can get preview. And obviously my photo is not great because it's uh, the wrong sizing, but you could put your own company logo in there. I know a lot of you guys have your own company or not your own company, your own personal logos. So maybe that's your first image. Uh, once again, if you have a partner, it's you, you guys together, uh, you put that as your image. So you started branding yourself more and more as well. So yeah, you could customize those and I, and I actually do recommend it. And if you guys do like, uh, like communities you sell, have you guys gone out with your camera and taking taking snapshots of the community. Uh, those are good ideas to do is go in through there and, and start grabbing just, you know, cool shots. Maybe, you know, welcome to Calabasas sign or the gates of Hidden Hills or, you know, uh, the Griffith Observatory take a picture of. So that way you can start branding yourself as a community expert in those areas. So uh, anybody have any questions? So this is a pretty, pretty neat tool. And once again, it's free. The company gives it to you. Uh, they'll let you go in, customize them like these things. It becomes autopilot uh, if you want it to be. Uh, once again, you can print them, you can mail them out. So if you want, you can map out the area. You can do a screenshot of the area you mapped out, send it to me, and I can get you a farm for this exact area. So these are for prospective sellers, and you could say, hey, uh, you know, you could send them this report once a month. So send me the given farm area. I'll map it out for you within our system of what you guys mapped out here. I'll send you a CSV file with the addresses and the owner's names, how long they've been there for, even we can do those type of things. And you can do a mail merge. Uh, anyone do mail merges right now at all? Okay, so mail merge, we can do a mail merge on these things and you can send them a personal letter. Hey, dear Brett, Nicole Borker, and I noticed you've been at your house at 1234 Main Street for 15 years. Here's some updates on what's going on in your neighborhood. So it looks like my time's about to run out because I've been about doing about 45 minutes. So I do uh, apologize. This is going to end. If it does end, shoot me an email or text. Uh, you guys all have my information. I did record this as well. So I'll send you guys a link.
with it. Uh, if you guys you know want to rewatch it, in case you watched all of Netflix already and you're sick of, you, there's nothing else for you to thank watch. You, sure. Thank you, right, Brett. Sure. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, guys, thank thank you. you guys all for coming. Okay. Bye. Uh, bye yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Sure, Thanks, Brett. Brett. Thanks, Brett. See ya. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.